changing the subject of the formula. So we rearrange a formula, making a new letter the subject. At the moment this reads Q equals, therefore Q is the subject. We've got to rearrange it so it says P equals. If we consider this as P plus 8, we need to subtract 8 from this side, subtract 8 from the other side, and therefore we get P equals Q minus 8. P is now the subject. Here we've got Y as the subject because it says Y equals 5X. We want to make X the subject. So if we divide this side of the equation by 5, we'll get X. Divide the other side of the equation by 5, we have made X the subject. We could write it either of these two ways. They're both equally correct. In this one, we've got to make T the subject. It's good to going to read T equals. So I need to divide this side by 3, and also divide this side by 3. I could either write it as S minus 7 over 3, or I could write it as S minus 7 a third of. Either of these answers are equally acceptable. Rearrange the equation to make P the subject. Show you're working out. Well, I advise you always to do that anyway. Let's remove the brackets first. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times P is 3P. Now let's subtract 6 from this side, leaving us with 3P equals, and subtract 6 from this side. Dividing both sides by 3, which we'd either write as Q minus 6 over 3, or we could write it as a third of Q minus 6. Either is equally correct. There is another approach to this, but I virtually always approach this sort of question by removing the brackets first. This triangle and this rectangle have the same area. So if this is a right angled triangle, then the area of this triangle is half the base, which is 3, multiplied by the height, the perpendicular height, which is 8. When we're multiplying, we could multiply this in any order. I'm going to choose to do 3 eighths of 24 and half of 24 is 12 square centimetres. Now the area of the rectangle is these two measurements multiplied together. So 6 times W is 6W. We're told the area of the triangle equals the area of the rectangle, therefore 6W equals 12. W itself must therefore be 2, 2 centimetres. Car depreciation. In 2001, a car cost £36,200. In 2002, a year later, the value of the car was 32218 What is the percentage depreciation? Depreciation is the same as loss. So if we're going to work this out, we first off need to find the change. Because percentage loss, or percentage depreciation, is the change over the original. Now this doesn't matter if you make a profit or a loss. If you want to work out the percentage profit or the percentage loss, you work out the change over the original and multiply by 100. Now what do I mean by change? It was £36,200. It is now £32,218. If I subtract these two figures, then I have worked out the change between one figure and another. I'll assume that this is a calculator question, although of course we should be able to do this bit without a calculator. This is the change. So the percentage change is to put the change from one figure to another over the original figure and then multiply by 100. So we've got 3982 divided by 
36200 multiplied by 100 and that gives us an answer of 11, 11%. There's 11% depreciation or loss in value between 2001 and 2002 on this car. Now this piece of information says that doctors sometimes use this formula to work out how much medicine to give a child. C is the amount for the child in millilitres. A is the amount for an adult in millilitres. And P is the age of the child in years. So the question is saying if a child's four years old and needs some medicine, how much does the child need? So we will substitute into the formula first of the child's age, which is the letter P. And then A is the amount for the adult, and an adult takes 20 millilitres. So by substituting the value of 4 for the age of the child, and 20 for the amount for the adult, we can work out the amount for the child. So 20 times 4 is 80, 12 plus 4 is 16, top divided by bottom, 80 divided by 16 goes 5. This tells us that the child, using this formula, needs 5 millilitres of the medicine. Functions. A function maps the number n to the number n plus 5. Complete the missing values. So if n is 8, n plus 5 must be 8 plus 5, which is 13. Working back the other way, if n plus 5 is 27, n itself must be 27 take away 5. Part B. A different function maps n onto the number 3n. So n maps onto 3 times n. So if n is 5, 3n must be 15, 3 fives are 15. And working back the other way, if 3n is 27, n itself must be 27 divided by 3. This continues the question, it's part C on functions. How many different functions can map 16 to the number 4? So there's lots of ways we could change 4, sorry, change 16 into 4. Complete the table by filling in two different possible functions. So it could be divide by 4. Now I could write that as n over 4, or I could write it as quarter n. So dividing by 4. Another way could be, in fact, to subtract 12. And there would be many other ways that I could have done it. Name these shapes. Give reasons for your choice of names. Well, this is a triangle. It's an isosceles, isosceles triangle. Why? Because it's got two equal sides. And it's got two equal angles. So I've got to say what the shape is and why. Now this is a kite. And the reason it's a kite is because it's got two adjacent. These sides are next to each other, so they're called adjacent. Two adjacent equal sides. Or two pairs of adjacent equal sides, because these are also equal. So two pairs of adjacent equal sides. This is a square. Why? Because it's got four equal sides and four 90 degree angles.